Good morning, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave. Welcome to the MagnaWave office hours. Glad to be back with you this Tuesday morning. Try to reach out to you every Tuesday morning and uh, discuss anything you'd like to talk about with regard to health and wellness, MagnaWave, PEMF, our machines, training, uh, any other questions regarding PEMF uh, and how you may utilize it for your health and wellness. Was not here last week. I was on the road last week uh, heading back to Kentucky. So we're uh, again, glad to be back here. If you'd like to talk with me uh, live and so we can have a conversation about a question or something you'd like to discuss please feel free to give me a call send me a text actually to 599 five, excuse me 502 599-9722. Just send the text to that number and then I will be able to call you back. That way we can control how things are going. If you call in, I might get two or three calls at one time and then we can't get to, to everyone. I do like to talk personally because it's just an, a way for us to get deeper into the uh, questions that you have because we can have more of a conversational uh, type of discussion. So please, if you'd like to uh, talk about a particular issue, 502 502- Five nine 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 seven two two. You can certainly also post your questions in the chat box uh, here on Facebook, and uh, we will. I will be able to see them and uh, read them and answer them, or my crew here will be able to uh, ask them, and so we can uh, stay up to date there. So post your questions there <coughs> as well. Excuse me. A couple things uh, coming up uh, that we're uh, working with, uh, the AOPP uh, that we're kind of uh, helping to sponsor and are be- stand behind is uh, getting ready to officially launch within the next week or two. So that's that's exciting. It'll be a place where PMF practitioners can come together uh, and share their knowledge and let people know where they are. And it's, it's also going to be there for uh, to try to bring some normalcy, if you will, to the uh, PMF industry. And I'm gonna address that in a little bit in one of the uh, questions uh, that we've been asked recently and I'll so I'll certainly uh, cover that at, at that point in time. Uh, one thing that is kind of exciting for us, a couple of things actually um, that, that are coming up very soon is, uh, as you know, many of you may be aware, back in 2008, Dr. Oz uh, did a program on uh, featuring PEMF therapy and various devices. Our Max machine uh, was on that particular program. Dr. Uh, Pollock was the representative of PEMF, high power PEMF on the program with Dr. Oz, but that program basically changed the game. It gave the PEMF industry, gave Max MagnaWave uh, a seal of approval, if you will. Well, I was recently uh, asked to participate in a mentoring program uh, with Dr. Oz to kind of, I'm going to meet with him at his home on April the 15th. Uh, for dinner uh, and to be able to bring him up to speed uh, where the PEMF industry has gone and kind of give an overview of where things are today and where we're going and let him share some input of what how he feels about that and so on and so forth. So it's really exciting to be able to uh, for us to go and uh, uh, be able to meet personally and uh, spend some time and, and uh, again, mentor uh, with Dr. Ah. So we're really excited about being able to do that. Also, a couple of years ago, for those of you who have come to MagnaCon uh, may remember, but we had a film crew there who was that was filming uh, Dr. Marty. They're doing a, uh, a, a documentary on his practices and as a physician, as a uh, veterinary uh, doctor and how he utilizes very various integrative methods, MagnaWave being one of them, <clears throat> into his practice. So they were they were doing a documentary on him that is completed. The premiere will be on April the 28th at the Tribeca Film Festival in uh, New York, produced by uh, Cedar Creek Productions. Uh, Cindy Meal is the producer of that particular program. So we're excited about that. We're excited for Dr. Marty. Uh, the MagnaWave machine did make the, certainly make the uh, the film, and it'll be uh, shown in, in the movie as a progresses. I understand it's, I have not seen it. I, Dr. Marty has. I understand it's quite a tearjerker uh, with what they do uh, in, in that particular movie. Cindy has produced, she produced Buck, which was the documentary about uh, Buck Brannaman, who was the horse whisperer that the movie, The Horse Whisperer was based upon. That's the last movie that, uh, not, not it's not the last one, but it's one, a more recent movie that was won many awards 
at various uh, film festivals uh, around the world and around the country. I spoke with Cindy yesterday and she's excited about this particular uh, movie. We are as well. We've filmed a whole um, series with Dr. Marty at about the same time that'll be used as an educational series that she's producing. So we're really, we're, we're excited about that. We're hoping to be able to get tickets to go to the uh, premiere and uh, to be with Marty and the crew uh, at that time. So we'll know how that shakes out, but that's going to be on April the 28th of this year. So a lot of stuff happening uh, in the next month and a half uh, for us also. Uh, also, I've uh, been uh, uh, participating in a new book dealing with brain health, and it's going to be dealing with uh, brain health. Uh, there's Elaine trying to call. She should know that I'm on the air. But at any rate, uh, dealing with brain health, and I'm going to be addressing PEMF and depression and uh, various um, other issues of brain health with the PEMF and, and how it is utilized in that book with uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton and Dr. Patrick Porter as the lead authors in the book. But we're looking, certainly looking uh, forward to that. And that'll be, again, MagnaWave and uh, PEMF and brain, brain health. <clears throat> okay, so to that end, uh, one of the questions that we've been asked, if you have any questions or you'd like to talk with me, again, just send me a text and uh, we'd be happy to uh, visit with you, give you a call at that point. Or if you have a, if there are any questions, come up. Um, Question, hi Pat, is the CE finally finished and complete or still waiting for the final okay? Great question, John. Uh, everything is finished as far as the factory inspections are concerned, and everything went very well as far as that was the final part was the factory inspection. I spoke with the uh, factory um, uh, Sunday, as a matter of fact, uh, the gentleman from the factory, and they are on them every day to get that final letter back. That's all it is. They just need the letter that said, yes, the, we're finished with the, with the factory inspection, and you can uh, go ahead and begin utilizing your CE stickers and so forth the CE medical for Europe's application and um, I tried to call him yesterday afternoon and he's assured me that they're on it every day trying to uh, secure that letter back so that's the status of that right now at this point John great question and I know you and I have talked about that a lot and it's very important for you it's it's important for all of us to be able to send the machines out of the country if we want to send a machine out of the country for human use it has to be safety inspected and pass safety inspection in the U.S. and for human use it needs to be have a CE to leave uh, the country for use in Europe, Canada and other countries that recognize the CE uh, medical label for uh, health use and so we're excited about that but we do need that. Outside of that if we machine leaves the country it has to be for veterinary use or something else and of course that gets confusing from time to time. So that is the update on that. Uh, great question John. I know you're patiently waiting and you've been very patient with us as we have fought through that process, but it is complete. We're just waiting for that one little final checklist item. Um, okay, so any other anything else, uh, Brad, at this point? Okay, I'll go on with the uh, question that we've received. Uh, over the years, and I'll, I'll explain this whole thing, people have talked about Gauss delivery, amount of energy delivery uh, produced with these particular devices, and there have been all kinds of numbers associated with how strong the machines are. The 1.7 Tesla, 1.9 Tesla, 1.9 nine Tesla would be 19,000 Gauss. And so most of the companies in the industry today are basing the Gauss delivery that they have based on what was originally formulated as a mathematical equation. Uh, uh, several years ago, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, and that was if I have this size transformer, this size capacitor, these resistors, this type of diode configuration, if all of that's in place and you plug it in, you turn it on, and you would get, by virtue of this magnetic uh, ma mathematical equation, this amount of Gauss delivery, 1.9, that's the number that was used for years. And uh, But as time went on, and, and the issue there was that a regular magnetometer will not accurately measure the type of signal we deliver because our signals start and stop, completely stop, and then a new signal is generated. 
and a regular magnetometer measures a signal that is continuous. It goes on, it does not stop, so a magnetometer can, can measure it. So uh, a few years ago, we uh, ourselves and the factory had some machines made, specifically designed and made, that will measure the Gauss output or the energy delivery of our type of machines. And uh, so we, we had them made and we began to measure. What we learned was that the numbers that everybody was using and most people continue to use are not accurate that there in many cases they're greatly exaggerated based on a mathematical equation and it's not hard to do you can do all of that and see what you get the challenge is that each attachment you use changes the amount of gauss delivered if you have a very small field of penetration for example our paddle the way it's made and it's it's coming out like a a, a spotlight you get a higher intensity uh, of signal you get a higher level of gauss delivered and so so you you may get that so at that point in time I immediately went out and said okay here's what the real numbers are of our type of machines and I when I say our type of machines I'm talking about ours and the others that are in the high voltage low frequency area uh, of delivery and there are several of those at this point and so we put the real numbers out there and what happened was the competition said see <laughs> their machines aren't as strong as our machines we're delivering all of this because they were using a mathematical equation we were using actual numbers generated from this device uh, measured by this particular device so at that point to avoid any further uh, confusion we just stopped talking about we talk about gauss delivery and the amount of energy we have those numbers we'll share those numbers if somebody wants to have them uh, but we don't publish them on the website because we don't want to have confusion at this point in the industry that's one of the things that the aopp hopes to step up and be able to do is to test various machines from all manufacturers and produce actual numbers that are the way the numbers are as to the delivery of the gauss from the machines in fact as i understand it the device is being upgraded so it can more accurately measure the gauss output or the energy output of these types of machines so that's why the question was why don't you publish that on your on your website and what is the amplitude that you of your particular wave well amplitude uh, let me come back to that so that's why uh, we talk about high gauss delivery and we talk about but we talk more than that we talk energy and that's the way our primary factory has done it for a number of years the higher the energy the higher the signal the more intensity generated with the signal is how we how we discuss it frankly you you can when you get way in and the other reason that people kind of landed in that 20,000 gauss or the two tesla range was in many aspects that of devices that have been approved that's the highest range in the world of the fda type of measurement uh now there are people talking about machines that are 30,000 and 40,000 gauss and and uh uh, well, we're going to find out. I mean, when the AOPP begins and gets to measure this, then they'll be measuring machines and actually doing it. I'm not trying to disparage anybody. I'm just saying there needs to be in the industry a standard by which we can we can operate. So that's one of the things that we're looking to do and participate and learn from uh, in, as members uh, of the AOPP, the Association of PEMF Professionals, uh, is bring some standardization so we can uh, everybody be on a, a playing field that everybody can is happy with and can participate with and and understand so the the purchasing public or the people that want to be involved will have a better understanding what it is so the other question that received is what is the amplitude of your of your waveform well amplitude applies more to a radio signal a radio station type of signal or a device that actually delivers a radio type of signal we don't we're delivering a magnetic field we're delivering a signal but it is a signal measured in gauss so our amplitude would be the gauss delivery and so we're talking about depending on the attachment in real life uh, on the higher powered machines uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of one tesla or uh, 10,000 to 14,000 gauss as to a normal type of signal with a, a device that is very focused on its delivery <clears throat> so again if you want to discuss that further we'd be happy to do that but amplitude applies to a radio signal we do, we talk in energy delivery which would be tesla and gauss and uh, we talk about our devices being high voltage low frequency delivering massive amounts of energy to the body 
happy to discuss that further if someone has a question. Okay, uh, anything else, Brad, that uh, we need to, uh, any other questions that might be there at this point? Um, if not, uh, let's see here if anyone has sent a text. No. And uh, send me a text and we'll get you some, send me a text and talk with me and we'll get you some MagnaWave gear if you'd like to uh, have some gear uh, for your potential, uh, for your personal use. Let's see, any other things I've got here, questions that have been asked in the last few days? It's been kind of, we've been very busy, but things have been uh, kind of quiet and I'm just getting back, got back off the road and so we're looking to... Uh, uh, get caught back up and understand where we are. So if you have any questions, uh, give me a shout and I'd be happy to uh, address them, whatever that may be. Uh, I did have a question the other day that I saw. Can you explain to me the, uh, oh, got a couple of, uh, got a couple here. All right. Uh, let's see. Got one right here. Let's bring up, um, oh, let me do that wrong, wrong. The number you. Okay. So here we go. It's, um, Oh, two, nine, three. Let's see. Here we go. We're ringing. It's Ben. See if good morning. Hey, Ben, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. It's good talking to you again. Nice talking to you. Um question I have is uh, a friend of mine just let me know yesterday he was diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis and he uh, has really bad swelling in his feet and his hands. He can't really do his job anymore. So I, I told him about the magna wave and told him about PMF and <clears throat> I just, I uh, since this kind of hits personal to me, uh, I know you might have talked about rheumatoid arthritis but could you explain about how the magna wave works with it or or is it effective with it uh with this type of disease oh absolutely and you know rheumatoid arthritis is a situation to where the arthritic type of condition kind of moves around the body and, and it becomes very uncomfortable maybe in your back or your legs or, or wherever it may be so in some cases we have to kind of chase it down and uh, because it, it just shows up in so many different manners. Now, it is pain. It is inflammation rela uh, related pain. And so to help the overall blood flow and the blood oxygenation of the body can help address that. With that type of condition, it's a little more difficult. I've treated people with rheumatoid arthritis in their first three or four treatments. Haven't, they haven't gotten the result that they're looking for. But if we stay concentrated and we stay after it to again improve the overall blood oxygenation of the body that can enhance can help uh, fight those types of situations in many cases it kind of like Lyme disease in some cases it kind of centers on one area of the body and it's easier for you at that point to approach that particular spot or situation that you, that you're dealing with but we've had people that suffer from rheumatoid arthritis and uh, it, it, it's uh, beneficial and it's helped out uh, uh, quite a bit and, and so it's I certainly would approach it I would approach it in his hands and his feet um, to to help the circulation there to deal with the inflammation in those areas and hopefully he would re uh, achieve the results that he's looking for does the uh, does the size of the machine does it does it matter I'm, oh, I'm sure it does it get a higher powered well, machine uh, on, only from the aspect of the speed um, really, when you're dealing, you know, of course, in the feet and the hands, you could put more energy there comfortably. You, you could certainly turn the machine up to, to uh, speed the process along. But getting down to the end of it, no. Uh, it's just requiring, with a smaller machine, it's just going to require a little more time. What would that be? Uh, you have the semi, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. In, in your situation, it, it, I would say that it would be a 20-minute uh, uh, treatment uh, would, be, would be ample to help that particular area and to get it going. He, he may not feel it as much as he would with a more powerful machine, but it's doing the same thing. So I would certainly not worry about that. In fact, I use one of our uh, ringer machines uh, that I treat my feet with daily uh, and quite often in, in the evening or at night when I'm sleeping. 
uh, to help with circulation and those kind of things. And I'm using a machine that produces uh, 500 gauss, uh, which is our lowest producing machine. Whereas when you talk about your machine, you can be looking with the paddle up to 3,000 gauss as far as the a delivery type of signal or more. And uh, so that there's a big difference there. But I'm very happy with the result that I'm achieving with the uh, smaller machine, the B2 is what I use. I mentioned to him that uh, he might uh, need several treatments. Yes, and maybe maybe stay on a constant regimen if he can find somebody. He lives up in New York, so I'm down here in the South, and I'd love to get get in the car and take my machine up there and help him out. But I said he you know, might need to find somebody up there that that uh, that can help him. That maybe has this machine because he's tried about everything. Right. And, and so. there, there's folks up there, so I would he, he needs to, you know, and anyone, go to the website, look, uh, there's a tab that talks about uh, PMF treatments, uh, click that tab, put your information in, and it will show you the practitioner that's closest to you, so he can find someone that is close to him, uh, uh, hopefully in his area. Okay. All right. All right. I appreciate it. Hey, Ben, Thanks a whole send, lot. An, send an email to info at magnawavepmf.com, and uh, we'll get you some gear. Thanks a whole lot, Pat. You have a great day. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, great call, and I um, uh, hope the answer uh, was helpful, and I certainly want to uh, help his friend. Okay, let's see. we got another one here. Let me bring it up. <clears throat> here we go. I was wondering if an attachment that is faulty can cause problems with the semi. Hello, this is Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Pat Zemer, MagnaWave. Hi, how are you, Pat? I'm good. I'm good. So you had a question. I did. I did. Um, I am having a little bit of difficulty with the machine in resetting, mm -hmm. um, but what I have noticed is if I use my small loop mm -hmm. um, or the small butterfly, it works fine. So it's the large butterfly loops that kind of send it so that it won't, it will just be on high. I can't get medium or low. We probably, so my question, yeah, those, they probably need to check the plug on that particular loop. I'd call the office and, uh, uh, send that in. If there is a wire that's come loose in that loops plug, uh, it could cause that not to operate properly and cause the machine to, in fact, need to be reset. Uh, so that, that's wonderful because yeah. they've been great. The office has been fabulous about, you know, dealing with me and uh, because I'm not quite sure what it is. And I would like, like to not be without the machine. If right. It's not the machine. Right. Um, so that would be good. Yeah. No, I, I, I uh, at this point, I would um, uh, contact the office. Let's get that particular loop. Hey, take a look at it. They can check that plug and make sure that it that it's OK or it's not a problem somewhere else uh, in in the loop. Awesome. Awesome. Thank okay, you for getting back to me. I love your lives. That's great. Okay, good. Thanks. Thank you. Now send an email to info. Support. Support. Send that email to support at magnawavepemf.com. They'll get with you and get you some gear. All right. Happy spring. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Alrighty. Bye-bye now. Great question. Uh, certainly, if you're having an issue with your device and you want to make sure that it's tested, call the office, talk to Lee, and uh, we'll make sure that, that you're taken care of and, and uh, taken care of in, in as prompt a manner as we can. Okay. Um, let's. Oh, here we go. Let me dial this one up. All right. Ah, okay. Good question. I think this might be Dana. It is. Hey, Dana. Hey, hey Pat. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What's up? Uh, my question is about Magnacon. Uh -huh. And um, are there going to be any additional um, discounts being offered that you are aware of? And if we can't attend, what are our options for continuing at? Okay, uh, what we're going to do, uh, and we've tried to do each year, and sometimes we've been more successful than, than others, but everything will be recorded. So you will have the option to, um, uh, to view and participate in the, in the various uh, aspects, learning aspects uh, from the event uh, for your continuing education uh, at that point. 
Uh, so we're looking forward to that. As far as the agenda, uh, we have been finalizing our speakers uh, just this week, and we'll be having the agenda out um, in the next few weeks as to what's going to be happening. Uh, additional discounts, I'm not sure. Do we have any other promotions coming up uh, that you're aware of, Chris? Well, well, I'll talk to the folks today and see if we can't fire something up to, okay. uh, to help out there. But uh, we will have the agenda. We do have a lot of great speakers uh, being uh, lined up to uh, join us this year. Uh, some people with professional sports activities and, and various athletes. So we're excited about that. Okay, awesome. And then, so if we aren't able to attend MagnaCon, but we want to view yes, the recorded that will be available. Material, is that is that going to count towards yes. our yes. continuing ad? Okay, so and and that that too is is that the number? Yeah. yeah so. If if someone wants to view all the have everything supplied to them, I believe that's one hundred and fifty dollars. If you can't come, okay. Perfect. Thank okay. you so much, Pat. I hope to be able to come, just not sure we can swing it this year. I know. Look forward to seeing you, and it's always a pleasure uh, to visit with you guys. Uh, send an email to support at magnawaypmf.com for some gear. Perfect. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Dana. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. That was good. Let's see here. Got one. Any other questions uh, from the uh, – okay, let's see. Question regarding HydroWave. As much as I'd love to give it, give my horses it daily, it's just not realistic. Would giving them once a week or during competition be of any value, or does it need to be continuously in the system to be of value? Thank you. Okay, Amanda, that's a great question. Um, is it going to be beneficial for competition? It, you know, it does. It is helping the, the blood oxygen of the blood and, and that type of thing, but it really works more as something that's after an infection, something that's attacking bacteria. So a once a week application uh, to your horses would certainly be potentially beneficial to put that, cause, because what happens, and let me just explain a little bit about works, is uh, they infuse the water with a, an, a, uh, with a nano-sized particle of silver. They'll put a, a bunch of nano-sized particles of silver in the water and then they have a proprietary process that they put the water through and what happens is the oxygen that's in the water attaches to or bonds to the nano-sized particles of silver. Silver. Now I say nano-sized because they're less than one part per million meaning they're trace minerals meaning they won't leach to the body and they can be passed so they're not considered heavy metals. But so the oxygen attaches to these particles of silver and as they're consumed, they pass through the, the uh, blood brain barrier into the bloodstream at which time they can, and they're negatively charged. So when they come up on negatively charged bacterial type of cells, they can come apart, attack them, hopefully kill them, come back together and move through the body until they are uh, discharged through the urinary process. And so that's how the hydro wave works. So the application um, is beneficial uh, at, you know, on a once a week type of basis. And it comes down to, uh, you might look at how you're, how you're doing it. Uh, some people will use a, a, a respirator to wear, or, or not a respirator, but a, um, what am I trying to think? A nebulizer to whether put uh, some of the product into a nebulizer or like the Centurion transpirator and they'll let the horses breathe it, ingest it, get it into their lungs and then into their body and bloodstream. You might do that on a, on a periodic basis uh, to get that in there. Now the, the dosage that you're using, uh, as you know, the human normal human dosage is four ounces to a gallon of water consumed at a rate of two four ounce glasses a day. Now that's somebody who's using it for a specific purpose. They're using it to, uh, they, they have a disease, they have an illness that they're trying to deal with right now. Now you could continue at that type of dosage uh, for as long as you wish, but if someone were to take and puts, put a, um, uh, a couple of capfuls in their in their drinking water once a day uh, for the for the horses, or take that particular uh, uh, dosage and put an ounce or so of that. Horses are more sensitive to medications than we are, so they may not need the dosage that we need. You think they would? I mean, they're a thousand pounds or whatever they are. So if we take four ounces of of the broken mi mixed up, not a four ounces of the hydroway but four ounces in a gallon of water if we take that a horse may only need two uh, ounces into their uh, pail of water 
every other day or whatever the situation may be. Having it in the system is better than not having it in the system. So I hope that helps uh, answer the question with how it's applied. To use it in a situation of competitiveness, although it's going to be okay, I, I don't think that's, that's the real function of it. But to help them uh, have that bacteria fighting, that bad uh, uh, fighting stuff in the body uh, once a week is better than none a week. So just hope that helps from that particular uh, position. Anything else, Brad? That, uh, any other? Oh, okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Magnaway being accepted into the Drugless Practitioner Association? You may have covered this before on another webinar, but I'd like to hear what this means for us practitioners, benefits, etc. Okay, the um, Association of Drugless Practitioners is a board-certified type of uh, group that they're go that they work with people who are dealing in drugless types of therapies and 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 uh, practices for what they do. Uh, that's exact drugless practitioner. That's exactly what it is. They have the availability to find insurance. They have the availability to provide uh, some background with what they do. And what we had to do in order to be accepted is we had to submit our certification program or our training program to them. And they analyzed it and said, and, and th are, you re are we really training? What are we training? Is it in depth? Is it something that fits their, uh, their guidelines? for the Drug, Drugless Practitioner Association and they approved us. They allowed us to, uh, to become associates with them uh, in that regard. So if someone takes our training, uh, the certification program or whatever, they take our training and they pass our training and they go on, then they can, if they desire, uh, become members of the Association of Drugless Practitioners as a, basically, it's, it shows that you have, you've completed our training, you fit their model for what they're doing so you can uh, be at their standards so it gives you uh, every everything we do when we do this is when you get a license to be a doctor it, it's you've shown that you've passed the test and you're doing this and so you fit this type of criteria and for this it just shows that that you've taken the classes with MagnaWave you've applied that to the Drugless Association so it just gives you another level of credibility gives you another level of understanding as to what's going on and the same thing will be applied to the uh, AOPP that, that you're a member of that group and you support unification uh, within the industry and, and a better understanding. So that's really where the Association of Drugless Practitioners is and uh, uh, it became a question that people began to uh, question and want to know is this something that we can do or can't do and how's it work and so we contacted them and they gave us the criteria that we must meet in order to be members of that particular group and allow our associates to be members also if they should desire and that's where the where the situation is so we're excited about that we're excited about anything we can do or be a part of to further advance the uh, PEMF uh, wellness industry and the MagnaWave uh, portion, our portion is our participation in that industry. Great question, and I uh, hope that was uh, sufficient for what, what you're looking for. I do believe we had someone else here that sent a text. I want to make sure we uh, take care of that. Here we go. Let's dial it up. All right. Good morning. Hi, Pat. Who is this? This is Kathleen Myron. How Hi, are you? Kathleen. How are you? Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. You need to you need to share all about your um, excursions. Oh, we'll do that. On your trip. We're gonna we're gonna do that. <laughs> Had uh, really got kind of involved with some dressage people. Uh, this. Uh, past month or so in Florida um, in, in an area that I've really not been very deeply into so that was a lot of fun and I will be sharing uh, more about that and uh, you had a question yeah. you were asking um, producing about half the energy well, yeah my device about two weeks ago I noticed um, you know I don't have a chance to use it on myself as much because thank be to God, I've been getting more busy here in Northeastern Ohio. That's a good thing. Now, um, I have a patient who, um, he his PSAs were 26.5 after one month 
of treatment two times a week per protocol, I his he reported back that his PSAs were two point two. Pretty good. So he's very he's very delighted. Absolutely. Um, he also has had some questions on the wave water. I also got him into the wave water um, because the way that um, I know it to be is that it helps to not only attack the bacteria but those tumor cells. That it could attack the tumor cells and um, decrease their their mass size. That that's um, what that's in, what in, it's said to do. That's correct. It, yeah, it, and and it'll increase the efficacy with the device. Yes, and as a matter of fact, I had a, I, I spoke to the gentleman uh, Friday afternoon. <laughs> Uh, I talked with him. He called, oh, and good. and I was able to spend some time with him on the phone, which I'm always happy to do uh, to help you and to help oh, our good. practitioners. Correct. Thank you. Now, the other question was, so I did notice with that patient, um, I had this in my machine in last week, and I'm missing it every hour of the day. Um, it was producing about half the strength. So uh, on a 10 on the Maya device, it would... You know, and you put the large loop around yourself, you can really feel it. Yeah. This was more like it was on a four or a five. Have you seen this before? Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, certainly it can happen. What happens is there are there are uh, diodes in the machine uh, that the power and the signal uh, basically passes through. And if one of those diodes, for whatever reason, fails, then that's going to change the, the uh, intensity of the device and the signal that it can deliver. And just, just thinking about it on, on the surfaces, that's probably what happened. And those, that's the kind of thing, you know, it's like a transistor. When the first transistor radios came out, uh, the deal was the longer a transistor works, the longer it's going to work. And if it's going to fail, it's going to uh-huh. fail sooner than later. And that, that could happen with, with a diode or something like that. But I would assume that that's what it okay. is and, and uh, that type of thing. Something just came loose or something, one of the diodes failed and it wasn't able to uh, juice up the way it likes to. I see. Okay, and that's something that I'm guessing, I'm hoping, could be easily fixed. Oh yeah, yeah, that's um, not a problem, and, and uh, they can fix that right up and and uh, get it right back to you and uh, get you on the road. Yeah, get get me back on the road to treating these patients. Right. So, um, okay, wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much. Pat, thank and you. I do appreciate your help and um, being able to refer um, patients like this one. You know, it's wonderful that you actually talked to him. Yes. Um, happy yourself. to do that. Happy and to do I, that. And I do appreciate. Yeah, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Be sure to Have send uh, send an email to support at Magnaway PMF. Get you some gear. Thank you so much, Pat. Have a great day. Uh huh. Bye bye. And you know, uh, to that end, uh, when you talk about that, uh, I was asked. Uh, he called in, or Kathleen called and said, uh, "Would he had some questions? Could could you address those questions?" And I was certainly happy to do that. And I've always said this, and and certainly uh, we have several people here in the office. Uh, everybody just about is involved with what we're doing, and and can can have a conversation. But I'm certainly available, and Elaine is certainly available, and and various folks that. If you have a question you want to talk with us, great. If you want to get us on the phone with your customer uh, to have a conversation with you and your customer, I've always maintained that. Two things that I've always maintained, and I encourage you to do this. If you're with somebody and they have a question, and it's it's a question that you, you just don't f- to feel secure enough in answering, get us on the phone right then give us a shout if we're available we'll talk to you we'll talk to your customer if not we'll kind of work out when we can do that and uh, happy to do that same thing i've had people uh, call me and say hey i'm going to be with four or five people this afternoon and they want to talk about this so they don't believe that uh can we call and i say absolutely so i tell them to call me put it on speakerphone and i'm happy to have that conversation and uh, talk to a group in that manner so we certainly want to be available to do that to help you uh, in your building of your business as you uh, work with your particular customers and patients. So just a couple of thoughts uh, for you to do that. Okay, let's see here. I got one. The number here. Um, Okay, here it is. Let me dial it up. All right, this is Terry. See if uh, Terry's available at this point. Come on. <laughs> Hello? Terry. 
Yeah, hi, Pat. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm driving, so hopefully I won't lose you here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, hey, you know, I have seen, obviously we've all seen the, you know, unfortunately the news coming out of Santa Anita and the, the uh, racehorses and, and the issues out there. Correct. Um, but ha have also seen, and I bet you have, in Texas, I think Weatherford, Texas, a, the cutting ho horse foal uh -huh. that was born prematurely. Right. That the, where the vet and the vet clinic is using MagnaWave to try and speed up the bone formation Correct. Um, in this colt. And um, I wanted to know if you could kind of address just for a few minutes the benefits of MagnaWave in the formation of bone, um, like remodeling of, of um, fractures and, you know, increased healing. Just kind of touch on that for a bit. I'll do that. Thank you. Um, yes. And, and basically, uh, the, the modality of PEMF is FDA approved for, for uh, non-union bone fractures. That's a fracture that will not come back together and, and heal from that aspect that the PEMF actually helps bring it together and helps the bone to remodel or grow uh, in that area to, to help heal those types of non-union fractures. And last year at MagnaCon, uh, uh, Dr. Amanda and uh, Verlinda uh, presented a situation where they showed where their Amanda's horse, Amiga, was severely injured in fact everybody wanted to put the horse down but uh, with persistent use of the magna wave they got the uh, bone to remodel the hoof to regrow and and the horse to uh, come back to life and and uh, be very good so those kind of things happen now what happens there uh, is it's the it's the oxygenation we make the blood healthier we try to help with the the uh, put things back to a more normal state so then the body can naturally better heal itself and that's what that's what happens in those types of situations and it's amazing the things that we see happening my understanding is with this uh, uh, colt in Texas that they're getting some good response that things are coming along and helping things uh, uh, develop as as they should and they want them to so it's very beneficial uh, from that type of situation great question does that help it does. It does. You know, I just thought this is something that's actually I had someone ask the other day, you know, and I know that there are some medications that actually, um, you know, unfortunately, as a side effect, can can um, cause issues with the bone, you know, and looking for opportunities, I think, and, you know, for us to, to oh, and, and for MagnaWave to kind of step in and, and help you know, in those situations. Right. So. Well, it's it's been amazing over the years when we've dealt with uh, uh, fractures and bone healing issues and bone strengthening. That's one of the things that they used PEMF for at NASA. Uh, when the astronauts return, they lose bone density in space to a point. So they want to do things to energize and, and get energy to the body to return the bone to the proper density to help it from losing density. So all of that stuff is available. Basically, it's not Great. NASA and rocket science, but it's not rocket science. It's just a matter <laughs> if we can, this, this device helps the body be, the, the cells to be healthier at the molecular level and to better do their job. And that's what we want. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, good. Thanks. Hey, thanks. Yeah, for I, I haven't seen a follow up on the Colt, but thanks for that. I, I'll have yeah. to look and see. But yeah. has, I just like a month premature, something like that. Yeah. I thought it was just something crazy, you know. Right. So. Right. The fact that he's doing well at all is just it's just shocking. Actually, exactly. How well he's done. We'll, we'll try to stay up on yeah. that on that as well. Thank you. Okay. for Thanks for the call. Uh, support at MagnaWavePMF.com. We'll get you some gear. I'll do it. Thanks, Pat. OK, bye bye. Really, some great questions uh, there today, and if you, I got, uh, uh, if you'd like to have a conversation, text me your name, and uh, I'll call you right back, and we can uh, answer your question or have a conversation uh, accordingly. It's always fun to uh, do it in that fashion, and if you do that, we'll get you some MagnaWave gear uh, to wear and have a wear or, or uh, MagnaWave gear to have your water, which is always good, <laughs> and uh, uh, help you take care of things. Uh, so it, it's um, any other questions, Brad, that have come up? Oh, here we go. 
Hey, Pat, I've been treating a dog that had ACL surgery over six months ago. I've been treating him twice a week for five weeks and haven't seen much improvement. He is still very weak behind. Do you have any other recommendations? I have the semi. I'd be interested to know uh, what's your treatment protocol. No, twice a week um, for five weeks. In that type situation, quite often, um, when it when it's been out that way a little bit, you might need to do it a little more. I don't know what your treatment time is, uh, but certainly uh, what happens is you have a situation like that where there's an injury and it's it's becomes chronic, and so what we got to try to do is get ahead of the issue. In other words get ahead of it so where where between treatments it doesn't get a chance to regress back to where it was and so uh, the only thing that I could see would be either a longer treatment uh, and I don't know what what level of energy you're using uh, but I would give the highest amount of energy if possible and uh, depending on which attachment you're using to the area to improve the amount of energy that goes to the area so those are a couple of questions that I have for you if you want to call me I can I can do that we can kind of discuss that but um, that's what I would approach. I'd want to make sure that you're, you're providing as much energy as possible to the area comfortably and that you're doing it uh, uh, at an intensity that is as beneficial as possible and then the length of time. It can take a long period of time to get the result that you might be looking for with some of these types of situations. When we're dealing with nerve, it, it's a lot longer to get inflammation out of a nerve than it is out of soft tissue. When you're dealing with those types of situations, that's just what it is. It's just going to take more time and longer. So I, I know it's a challenge, but that's really the, the, the bottom line is that, that you, what you need to address in order to uh, get the results that you're looking for. It can take it can take a lot of time when you're talking about an ACL type of injury. Uh, it's not uncommon for athletes who have those types of injuries five or six weeks. It, it could be 12, 16 uh, weeks before they get to the point to where where things where things are going. When I did my MCL here a few years ago, uh, and and tore it or injured it, it took me probably uh, the doc thought it was going to be six months um, to to really bring it around. It took me about oh three and a half to four. So my my uh, my repair and recovery was was faster, but it still took the four four, six, uh, you know, the four months uh, to get that. If it's real severe and it was a surgery, it could take longer. So you just got to stay on it. Let us know. Keep us up to breast, uh, up, uh, up, to time, up to speed as to uh, what's going on. But that's the situation there. It can just take some uh, more time. Uh, thanks for asking. I hope that, uh, hope that helps. Anything else there, Brad, for us? Uh, let's see. Uh, any tips on treating a small tear in the suspensory? We'll be treating the horse twice a week. You got it. I would treat it as often as possible. And then uh, depending on the machine that you have, uh, the treatment time, uh, small tear in a suspensory, I would say uh, uh, 12 to 15 minutes right on the area. Um, uh, as often as twice a week will be beneficial. Of course, that depends on what's happening in between treatments. Uh, if the you know if things are allowed to not regress uh, on a um, uh, my recommendation in most of those cases is to get you know pick a number five to seven, seven to ten days, bing 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 continual, and then twice a week to support. Now, if they'll allow that, if that fits the schedule, fits the travel schedule, and all that. But I if if I could. Or if you can't, if you're going to be in the area, I would do it twice a day for three days. And again, get ahead of the situation and then fall into a regimen that, that is beneficial that will carry it through and continue it in that, in that fashion. But twice a week is better than none per week, for sure. And, uh, but I'd look at the time and the intensity delivered uh, to the area. Great question. Uh, thanks for asking. Let's see if there's anything else. We're getting close on time here. Got another meeting here in a few minutes that we need to run to. But uh, it's always fun. I really appreciate the... Uh, calls and the conversation today let me make sure that anybody anybody else uh, come back in that I need to uh, nope that's clear I don't see any other questions 
uh, on the board. If you have a question, uh, send us an email. Send me an email, Pat Zemer at magnawavepemf.com. I'd be happy to uh, uh, bring those questions up and have them for you uh, next week and uh, when we meet. And uh, certainly we have other webinars and, and things going on. Lane has the wellness webinar uh, that she does, women's wellness web webinar. And uh, we want to have a lot of participation in these types of uh, activities and education. We, our whole deal is to bring you the education that you're looking for, keep bring you up to speed as to uh, uh, how things work and how things may be able to potentially uh, work and help you with your uh, health and wellness and the health and wellness of your uh, small animals, large animals, and, uh, and people that you may be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, anything else, Brad, that we have at this point? doesn't look like it looks like everything is uh, quiet MagnaCon's coming up if you want to come join us uh, it's the 12th 13th and 14th of June uh, this year in Louisville uh, at the Marriott we're gonna have a lot of fun we're going to Churchill Downs on Thursday evening uh, for evening racing and uh, great uh, food and uh, festivity and the MagnaWave uh, classic horse race uh, that we have each year so we're looking uh, forward to that evening and then a lot of other fun and great educational opportunity great time to mix and mingle with people and learn about how they're developing their businesses and what they're doing it's just it's it's just a great time and we certainly enjoy uh, having you here with us uh, each year at MagnaCon and we're growing uh, it's just grown uh, each year by a hundred or so uh, participants we're looking this year to have three or four hundred people with us which will be incredible uh, great speakers being lined up so make a note come try to join us for MagnaCon uh, this year and uh, look forward to seeing you at that point in time Okay, no other questions. It's been a pleasure being with you this morning. I uh, look forward to uh, coming back with you again next Tuesday. Uh, wave on to positive, good health and wellness. and Have a great week, and uh, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.